Hello guys, this is Sean Kwon from Korea. Uh, today I'm going to talk about IBM's 127 qubits quantum processor, which was announced very recently, and plus quantum company's roadmap check as well. So first to start off, IBM un unveils 127 qubit processor, which is called Eagle. So IBM CEO Arvind Krishna, Krishna on the 14th said, uh, at the interview with U.S. internet media Axios that newly developed quant uh, quantum processor that is named as Eagle is capable of processing 127 qubits uh, which could surpass existing computers with performance of 100 qubits or more. So Eagle will be introduced at the IBM Quantum Summit which will be uh, held today, I think. So currently, IBM operates a 65 qubit quantum computer called Hummingbird, and then this year, 127 qubit processor called Eagle, and then next year, Osprey, which has 433 qubits, and then 2024, Condor, which has over 1000 qubits. So she said that when solving a problem, a conventional computer finds the answer by counting possible cases one by one versus where quantum computers are suitable for solving complex problems because they look at the number of multiple cases at the same time. So she also said that quantum computers are expected to play an important role in the next few years, that I agree as well. So maybe quantum computer can produce something very practical, maybe within two or three years in the field of machine learning or financial services. But others argue that it is expected that it will take more than 10 years to have uh, quantum computers as something useful. So IBM demonstrated that it will overcome its sluggish performance and undervaluation compared to other big tech companies such as Apple, Meta, uh, which was previously Facebook and Google by quantum computing. So they are very concentrated on this business. So I think IBM is really focusing on this business of quantum computing. So I think the key players in quantum computing industry is IonQ, which is the head or the front runner of IonTrap method, and IBM, which is which uh, is running as a first place in superconductor method. So we have to closely monitor these two companies' uh, development process. So I think IBM can be considered to be IonQ's biggest rival currently. So the manager of IBM's experimental quantum group, Jerry Chow, this guy, said that the company was still working to benchmark or test the performance of the new Eagle processor. So most of the media told that IBM has developed a new quantum processor chip that has more than 100 qubits, but they never told that their uh, performance has not been evaluated yet. Only a few of them, few of the media told this truth. So let's take a look at it. So the company, IBM, still was not ready to say how long the Eagle qubits can remain in a quantum state or the degree to which the qubits are entangled. So they just told us the number of qubits, not their performance or their uh, quality. So IBM was debuting a new metric for measuring quantum performance, as you know, which is called circuit layer operations per second. Uh, in short, it's clubs. This, con uh, this includes quality, performance, and speed. So they argue this is the comprehensive metric for quantum computing, but IBM is not ready to release clubs figure even for the new Eagle processor. So this is again an area where we are in the process of measuring. So this guy told us that, but again, IBM is making progress in increasing the coherence time of its earlier version of 27 qubit Falcon processor. So they're doing very well, but not they did not uncover the performance and the speed of the new quantum processor. So Falcon processor can now hold for 300 microseconds, which is 0 0.0003 seconds during a quantum state. But if you compare this to IonQ's quantum processor, we could see a big difference in the later slide. So by the end of 2021, Eagle processors will be available via cloud. 
So as we can see, he also announced plans for the next generation quantum system called IBM Quantum System 2. So what this basically is that it's a IBM Quantum Computing Data Center. Uh, and they already established a partnership with US, Germany, Japan, and the fourth goes to Yonsei University in Korea. So IBM Quantum System 2 is designed to handle greatly increased number of qubits. So it allows users to manipulate qubits and also has cy cyogenic cooling method to keep qubits at a temperature low enough for quantum proper properties to emerge. So what it means is that this data center requires a big space for cooling. So the cooling system has a hexagonal space inside which maximizes the support of a uh, hardware space and also enables engineers with easy access to hardware. So it just means uh, this will require a lot of space. So it will be operational in 2023 at IBM Research Headquarters in Yorktown Heights, New York. And IBM's strategy seems to be pushing forward in a large data center style, even at the risk of a large space, uh, even at the risk of requiring a large space and a lot of uh, electricity. So I think this might be a different path that IBM chose because IMQ tries to have a smaller processors and uh, connect them together to have a rack sized processor. Uh, and make them as a data center. So they'll require a smaller space with smaller power. But IBM, by using superconducting method, even though it requires a lot of space and a lot of electrons, electricity, they just choose to go with that large spaced data center. So they have different strategies here. So let's, let's take a look at the error rate of IBM's quantum computer. So according to the data at the set, end of September 2020, the error rate of IBM's currently released 65 qubit quantum processor, which is now currently being used by public, uh, when used as a gate with two qubits entangled is about 1.5%. So that means the logic success rate is 98.5%. And they also demonstrated C0 gate fidelity up to 99%. 99.9% .9 in 27 qubits processor. So this by far is the best performance or the l smallest error rate among the quantum computers. But let's keep in mind that this only applies to one of the gate operations among uh, many others. So IBM is doing pretty good at uh, reducing error rate. And IBM's interim goal is to launch 1000 qubit quantum computers with 0.01% error rate. So they're aiming for that. And in the fall of 2019, Google announced that it had reach, reached quantum su supremacy, which is a state in which quantum computers can perform op operations that are not practically possible with traditional computers. But IBM refutes that Google's claims are technically and philosophically is wrong. So I guess uh, we could see from here uh, what the pros and cons between superconducting methods and trapped ions method. So for superconducting methods, we could we know that the company using this technique is Google IBM and ion traps, IonQ, Honeywell, and Rigetti. So for superconducting loops, their uh, longevity, I think this means the quantum state time is very small. And IBM currently has 0 0.0003 seconds compared to trapped neon having more than 1000 seconds. So the stability or the quantum state duration is much better at trapped neon technology. And the logic success rate is 99.4% for superconducting loops. But for trapped neons, it's over 99%, 9, 99.9%. And also the qubits number in Tangle is 9 and 14 here. So trapped neon seems better, but for its cons, it's very slow. And also many complex lasers are needed to uh, manipulate the qubits. And also people say that scalability is one of the uh, cons for the trapped neons. But for superconducting method, 
the pros is that it's fast working, building on existing semiconductor industry. So it's very cost effective, but for the cons, it collapse easily and must be kept cold, which requires a lot of space and electricity. So we could see the difference in these two techniques here. So let's keep that in mind. And I visited <coughs> Amazon Bracket so I could uh, get a sense of how these companies uh, quantum computers are being used. And uh, I think D-Wave doesn't stand a chance among other competitors uh, in terms of that they're not actually using the quantum technology, they're using the quantum annealing technology, which many scientists argue that they are not even using or developing a quantum computer. So I think D-Wave is out. And we could see that IonQ and Rigetti has the place here. And Rigetti has more qubits, but in the later slides we could see what the difference is between IonQ's quantum computer. So IonQ uh, currently has 11 qubit system on cloud and they uh, told us that 32 qubit system is already developed and is by used by financial firms uh, partners such as Goldman Sachs and Fidelity in private cloud server so 32 qubit system might be able uh, will be transferred to public cloud I think next year I think that's what Peter Chapman told us uh, and from here, I could see the pricing tables and IonQ uh, differentiated itself from here. So per task price, oh, I mean here, on the per shot, per shot price, uh, IonQ were, was the most expensive because I think they have the best quality. But that's my only speculation. And the next topic is quantum computer companies roadmap progress. So my colleagues in my uh, Kakao Talk group did some research and we found that IBM is progressing as planned and without setbacks. So it's 100%. And for IonQ and Rigetti had 150% but for IonQ and Rigetti they are uh, reaching their roadmap 150% uh, faster than planned. And for Honeywell, we couldn't find any information. And for Google, no recent development news were made. So for uh, IBM, mm, we could see their roadmap here. So 27 to 65, 127, 433, uh, over 1,000, and then to 1 million. So they reached here. So they're going as planned. And then we could see from here, IonQ wanted to reach 30 qubits in 2024, but they have actually reached 32 qubits here. So they are ahead of their game. And for Honeywell, I, I couldn't find the exact numbers, but here their plan is moving from 10 qubits to 40 qubits with 2 qubit fidelity over 99.5% with all to all connectivity using ion trap uh, technology. So their tactic is pretty similar to what Chris Monroe said. There's, they will start by linear, race track, grid, integrated optics, and large scale data center scale. But no specific numbers were made here. And then Rigetti, from their CEO presentation last year, I could see that. They did some early R&D work at 2016 to 2017, and then they started uh, making quantum computers out in the public. And their most recent one, I think it's here, where they have over 30 qubits and has fidelity of about 95%. And for Google, they I found their roadmap, but couldn't find their recent development news. So they did, uh, 54 qubits at 2019, which the processor was named Sycamore, I think. And they had specific plans for uh, the year until 2029, but as I mentioned before, they didn't have any specific news out yet. So what we found is again, IBM is doing pretty good as planned. And IonQ and Rigetti is doing over and faster than their plan. 
and Honeywell could Google, we couldn't find any information. So I think IonQ, uh, we have to focus on IonQ and IBM because they seems to be the leader in the quantum race. So this concludes my presentation of IBM uh, introducing one 27 qubits processor and also uh, checking the quantum company's roadmap. I hope it helped you even a little bit and as I mm, this is just for information sharing purposes so please do your own DD and be responsible for your own investment so I'll see you guys at the next video